In November 1990, the most terrible murderer of the USSR, Andre Chikatilo, was detained. His name is known to the whole world it causes fear and is strongly associated with dozens of monstrous murders. To this day, films and series are made about him, and his fanatical followers compete in the number of victims. But why was Chikatilo caught for 13 years? At the same time, they even condemned the innocent and they spent as much as 10 million Soviet rubles on the search. And how did you manage to track down this maniac? The future killer was born in October 1936 in Ukraine, in the Kharkiv region. Allegedly, the boy had congenital hydrocephalus, a brain disease that causes headaches and impaired vision. In addition, Chikatilo was allegedly beaten by her mother, because he was incontinent of urine. When the Great Patriotic War began, the boy's father went to the front. At that time, the village where Andre stayed with his mother was captured by the Germans. As if then, Chikatilo became a witness of brutal executions. They also shot at fleeing children. According to the legend, Andre then slipped and hit his head on a stone and woke up lying in a pit among dead bodies. During the war, Andre's mother gave birth to a girl, as if after rape. According to rumors, the child's father was a German soldier. In the 33rd year, my older brother Stepan was eaten by cannibals during a famine. They were eaten, grabbed by people, hungry, desperate. Ego was eaten. My mother warned me all the time, don't leave the yard or they'll eat Stepan and they'll eat you. But there is no evidence that Chikatilo had a brother. Probably the children were simply scared so that they would not go outside. The future maniac said that when he was 14 years old, a neighbor tried to rape him. He will remember this stress for a long time. And already in the army, Chikatilo is still raped, but already by his colleagues. But still, when Andre returned to his native village after Dembel, girls found him attractive. But at the very last moment, nothing came out of Chikatilo. And she said, yes, we already planned but he is not suitable as a man, and that's all. It was spread all over the village that he was an unworthy invalid, and that's all. Well, I ran away from the village out of shame. Only Andre's future wife managed to overcome him. There was no passion in their marriage, but they still managed to have two children. For her, he was a faithful, calm, and hard-working husband, as if he could not even cut the chicken, because it was pitiful. But at what point did he start turning into a real monster? For the first time, Chikatilo's deviations began to manifest themselves during his work at a boarding school. He sat down with schoolgirls in order to explain complex topics to them, and at this time he stroked and hugged them. He even locked himself in the classroom with one. But after Andrei Romanovich took his students swimming, his career as a teacher came to an abrupt end. Then one of the girls allegedly swam far away. Chikatilo noticed a teenager fighting back from the group, swam to her, and started grab indecently. The girl was very frightened and began to break free. At this moment, the maniac experienced excitement. Of course, Andrei Romanovich was forced to write a statement as soon as the incident became known. Chikatilo soon took his family to the city of Shakti in the Rostov region, where he found a new job. Supplier It was often necessary to go on business trips. This will give the maniac the opportunity to kill people in different regions of the USSR, which will complicate his search. In December 1978, Shakta received information about the disappearance of second grader Elena Zakotnova. Two days later, she was found raped and strangled in the Hrushevka River. The investigators quickly detained a certain Alexander Kravchenko. The suspect had previously been convicted of rape, so suspicion fell on him. Chikatilo was also then suspected of murder, but they could not prove their involvement. There was no weighty evidence. At the same time, Kravchenko was shot. And the case of the murder of Elena Zakotnova later raised the discussion about the necessity of the death penalty. It was this murder that became the first in a series of bloody massacres against minors and women of easy behavior. Then the media was silent. In the USSR, they simply could not tell that a cruel maniac was operating in the country. Therefore, many girls did not even suspect what danger could threaten them. 
the maniac looked for his victims at bus stops or train stations. After that, he offered to show the way or watch a movie on a VCR in a private house. Gullible victims voluntarily went to a painful death. Chikatilo killed girls near the path where people often walked. According to him, he was supposedly protected by spirits. He himself heard people passing by, but that ego is not there. The investigators believed that a mentally ill person should be killed with such cruelty. Detention of the mentally ill began. Locals called the actions of the police the work of fools. Then it was possible to detain several lunatics who confessed to the murders. But this did not stop the wave of criminals. All these detentions and unjust sentences only diverted the investigation from the main goal, the capture of the real maniac Chikatilo. In addition, the lack of hard evidence hindered the police. Only once did the maniac arouse the suspicion of law enforcement officers. They noticed a strange man who molested girls near the bus station near the park. And after observing him a little, I managed to find out that he often changes transport, spends the night at the station, and in addition, has relationships with girls of easy behavior. It would seem that everything came together, and you need to take a potential killer. In the morning, Chikatilo was indeed detained. A knife, rope, and petroleum jelly were found in his suitcase. But it wasn't here. Andrei Romanovich explained that he ties boxes with a rope, cuts bread with a knife, and uses petroleum jelly after shaving. Blood was taken from the maniac, but experts mistakenly believed that it should be of the fourth group. Chikatilo had the second. The maniac was released and the killings resumed. The serious search for the monster began only when the number of victims exceeded 40. Ten million Soviet rubles were allocated for his search. Helicopters were launched into the sky, and militiamen helped in the search on the ground. Among them was Chikatilo himself, who helped to look for himself in order to avoid suspicion, and at the same time to understand the scope of the search. During the operation, more than a thousand criminals were discovered. But it was still not possible to catch the maniac. In 1986, there was not a single murder similar in handwriting. But within an hour, new victims began to appear outside the Rostov region. Then the investigators knew that the criminal had to travel on electric trains, buses, and trains. Cute police officers in civilian clothes were on duty in the carriages and at the stations. But they did not know that such a type does not attract Chikatilo. He was interested in underage boys and girls and easily available vagrants. In an attempt to find out the psychological portrait of the killer, Operatives turned to psychiatrist Alexander Bukhanovsky. He described the maniac as a calm and sensible family man, heterosexual and impotent. He explained his conclusions by the fact that the maniac used a blade as a genital organ and collected intimate parts of the victim's bodies as trophies. In November 1990, the last murder took place, after which Chikatilo, as before, went to the platform to leave. Usually, he managed to get lost among other people, but not this time. A raincoat with clinging leaves and a suitcase gave the impression that he was not an avid mushroom picker at all. Meanwhile, the policeman asked the maniac to show his passport. After ten days, he was put under surveillance. Then it was found that Chikatilo is constantly trying to get acquainted with boys and girls. And after one of the unfortunate cases... He almost threw himself under the wheels of the car. On November 20th, the killer left work early to go to the trauma center because of a sore finger. A 16-year-old boy bit his MU. When Chikatilo found out that he had a fracture, he went to the store in upset feelings to get beer, which was poured into a three-liter can. On the way out of the store, he was taken by the police. At first, the criminal denied everything, and did not talk to the investigators. There was still no direct evidence of the police's guilt. Then psychiatrist Alexander Bukhanovsky came to the aid of the law enforcement officers again. In three hours of conversation, he pulled out of Chikatilo a sincere confession written by hand in notebooks. A prosperous, neat-looking man confessed to 50 murders, but their exact number is unknown even now. Have you ever thought about the torments in the other world and meeting your victims? No, I didn't think about it. All this, I believe, that all this does not concern me somehow. All this passed by my consciousness. 
to describe if all my torments, all the circles of hell have already passed. I have already been to that world more than once. While Chikatilo was being tried, he was making a madman out of himself in every possible way. Crouched, pretended to be sick, and took off his pants in front of everyone. The relatives of the victims present in the hall tried to harm the cruel killer. They threw objects at him, shouted at him, and even wanted to break into the cage so that he would destroy the maniac with his own hands.